The backhand three-quarter length is a pretty tricky area, and especially when we're starting to use the left foot in that open stance. So this is a little clip and video of what I was doing with my student the other day, really trying to optimize and work on how to intercept that ball before it goes to the back wall, but using that non-traditional leg, that left leg, which is really relatively tough and something that we need to work on. So we had the Stingray just firing a few balls out, and I want to use this opportunity to dissect a few of the technical points so you can go and have a little go at this yourself. But listen, anyone that's watching this and liking these, please do click in the link in the description. Grab your free personalized swing audit. I'll be able to help you out as much as possible. And please do share and love and subscribe to the channel. It's going well so far. So all the love from the squash community has been fantastic. So thank you very much. Okay. So as I said, this has probably happened, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years ago now. So it's getting a little bit older. But, you know, back in the day, if the ball was in that position, you would never even think about using that open stance. But just in simple terms, using the open stance, it's so much more efficient. If you think about that, I'm moving to the ball. This is the closest foot. So if I can throw that out there, great. Obviously, may, I might get a little bit more power from this foot. And you know what? In, ideally, you use both. But just in this position to be efficient, intercepting that ball on the rise there can be really good just to, you know, your opponents likely have, they would have just moved up to there, not fully to the tee. And you're just going, right, you know what? I'm just going to send you back in. I'm going to take that tee position again. It's just a bit of quite of a neutral shot, but it's actually really good just for court position. You're not too far away from the tee. You've got in that position and you're just chipping that ball down the line. Don't even need to hit it too hard and that ball can be sent there. So again, looking at just a couple of mine on the right to start with, if we're just noticing the swing there, it's not necessarily a full swing, but just look at that end point. I'm just clipping it, aren't I? I'm just going right there, clip. I'm just trying to throw that racket head up towards the end, loosen my wrist position just so I can get some height. Let's be real, you're going to have to sacrifice power. Don't fool yourself that you're going to get the optimum amount of power here. Okay, so let's do a little bit of our compare and contrast as I like to always do. So just have a look at that there for now. Take a look at my dipping shoulder there. How much I'm dipping and rolling that shoulder in compared to my student there. It doesn't feel like a huge amount of dip. It feels like his shoulders are relatively square. Because if you just notice that logo, like oh, you can almost like see it fading off into the background there because I'm trying to roll it around. I've actually done a second version of this filming from a different angle, so please do go check that out. It'll be really useful to see it from that different angle because there's going to be a few different nuances. So you can probably see straight away that I'm able to twist a little bit more than my opponent, or my opponent, my students, and that makes a big difference. Watch how when I leave the tee, notice what happens to my elbow compared to his. His elbow is floating out in space a little bit, whereas my elbow is dipping in. I'm trying to get it underneath my rib cage as quickly as possible. I love this idea. My left hand would be somewhere around right about there now if you were to be able to see through my body. And that left hand is probably sitting just above my left hip area. So that's what I noticed. Someone like Karim Gawad is phenomenal at this. As he leaves the tee, he's so good at pulling that racket and arm across his body in that optimal position. And we'll see here, just always talk about the one, two, three parts of the swing. Where what is that starting point? One, two, three. Let's just have a look there. See, I feel I like keep my racket in position one a little bit early because we actually make contact at the same time. Check that out. So again, I'm not trying to cheat it here, but my student tends to release his position one a little bit early. And I think that's because of what's happening in the shoulders or the lack of rotation, the lack of pivoting and turning and you know even pulling in that left hip area, so right hip area, all of these little things, I would like to see him get a little bit better. We did a bit of work on this, and again, we did actually quite a lot of ghosting, and we filmed it from slightly different angles, and I'll be doing some uh, analysis on that as well. But I think it's that, that early rotation that really optimizes what I'm trying to do. I'm able to store my energy. Then in position two, just looking at my swing here, we both actually both do that really, really well. Look at that. Super horizontal, super horizontal, strings, knuckles, forearm looking up, strings, knuckle, forearm looking up. I know you can't see those other two areas, but trust me, if, if, that, if I'm seeing the blade there, things are pretty good. Things are pretty good in that technique. And it's that, you know, that classic, you know, wobbly wrist position that gets people in a lot of trouble. Again, I think when you see it from the other angle, you might be able to get a sense what's happening here compared to there. And what I mean by that, how tucked in I am. I feel I'm a lot more tucked in. My hand doesn't go necessarily, look, look at the highest points of my hand. I know you can just see it sneaking over there. That's pretty high, isn't it? You know, and I think again, it's a little bit of a compensation for the lack of this, the lack of that, the lack of 
that real coiling and, you know, turning yourself into like a mini pretzel, like folding in on yourself, I think would be really key to get that right. And again, I think you'll see this from the other angle. So we do a couple of things really well. Left foot goes back, obviously. We're lunging, I think, in a very similar position, a really nice load in the knees. Look at how close our right knee is to the ground. We're dragging our back foot, you know, lots and lots of good stuff there that he's doing really well. You'll probably notice there he looks a bit constricted now, doesn't he? As he's swinging, it looks a bit of a block. And there's, there's quite a, like, look at that. He's having to like slice across it, leaving his racket face open at the ceiling. And look at that severe slice. That's again, the compensation for a couple of little things that he hasn't got quite right. Whereas on my one, like I said before, I'm, I'm almost got my natural swing, but I'm just trying to clip it there. I'm just trying to clip it. I'm just trying to throw that racket in and flick the wrist and just send it a little bit more up. So what's happening when we're coming out? As I'm throwing it, and by the way, look at the trajectory of my strings or both of our strings. We're tending to throw it upwards. This is definitely a zone three, even a zone four type of shot. You're not looking to attack your opponent. You're not looking to apply pressure by pace and acceleration. You're looking to clip the ball back, get back to the tee and secure a solid position, float that tee across if it's a good enough shot. Again, I think the mindset's really important on this. So as we're coming out, <clears throat> Again, there's that, there's that slice. I just want to reinforce that. Sorry if I'm hammering the points, but I think it's really important to see that. And look what he does there. Look at how his head is now looking fully at the front wall and his whole chest and shoulders are looking at the front wall. There's two little issues here. He tends to get too close to the ball and then, you know, you almost have to open up to get a bit of power, like using a bit of body weight to open up. But secondly, and we've discussed this, He's very, very eager to see the ball hit the front wall, which is, no, we don't want to see that too much. You can watch the front wall or see the ball hit the front wall out the corner of your eye. You turn your head if you need to, but try and keep something side on. Keep yourself in the shot, hips, shoulders, chest, because you can skip back to the team. And now look at this. Look at how my left foot is skipping under, back to the tee, and it's trying to keep a certain shape in my body that side on. My student there, as he goes in, he literally falls, doesn't he? He falls backwards with this foot there, opens up, and now the foot that's pushing back to the tee, so his left foot, is now just coming forward. And again, look at how open that is. Like, if you're playing the ball down the side wall, I use this in another video, I want you to think about your side wall, that backhand side wall, as a movie screen, as a movie theater. You need to sit in your seat longer, stay, watching your movie screen, not the movie screen at the front wall. There's actually balls hitting the front wall for what? 0.01 of a second, like less than that. It's touching the front wall. There ain't a lot of information on the front wall. That ball is ideally coming back down the line. So you want to be side on. You want to be optimizing yourself to be in a side on position. If I'm honest, there's no point really looking at the front wall. Of course, you're going to look and of course, everyone does look at the front wall, but be minimalistic. Do as little as you can of that because the game's getting played up and down here. So keep yourself there. Keep yourself in that position. Side on, side on, side on. Again, going in, let's just look at the footwork. See, watch this. Look at how I drag that foot towards it, but I'm keeping it this side on. So I'm keeping it just in front. So now I'm loaded up on my legs. You can't quite see it from this angle, but loaded, ready to spring. And now my left foot is now popping in behind. Watch this. They're using my knees, popping in behind, and just like a very natural, easy way to get back to the tee. And look, I'm opening up here because I'm looking at Stingray now and, you know, looking for when the next ball drops. If I was in a game, where's my ball gone? There, it's not too bad. You can't see it bounce, but it's somewhere around about there. I would be slightly pivoted, turned. So again, this is obviously not exactly like it would be in a match because I'm already looking for the next ball. But I might actually reduce the, the cadence and the amount of balls that come out to actually stop, practice side on and get there and then do that for a second and then look back at the machine. Anyway, little side note there. So again, hopefully parts of these tips are resonating. That's three quarter length on the backhand. Tough, 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 tough. And again, sorry, there's something I just noticed there that I want to point out. We both do a split step. My, my student does it slightly early. It doesn't quite time it right. Crossing under. And I'm a big fan of this cross under. So as I pushed, again, it's quite efficient to throw that foot under there. See that little cross. My student does a little bit of a one, doesn't quite, does a little skip, which is good. Like, so there ain't nothing wrong with that. So a version of what he's done on the left and also maybe a little version of what I've done on the right. It propels you, it pushes you off nicely. 
And what it does, look what it does for my hips. Look at how I'm doing there. <laughs> Again, it's funny saying this, but just check my butt out for a second. It's, it's a little bit, little bit bigger than I'd like right now, but anyway, little side note. But um, see how I'm pivoting. I'm trying to get that round. I'm trying to throw myself around there. My student actually doesn't do it that well. If you think about that, if you just look at the angle of, of his butt, he does it there towards the end, but he doesn't quite throw his hip round. I quite like this idea about trying to throw my left hip round more and my right hip at the same time. So you can just see that there's that little, there we go, little turn. And a lot of it's got to do with that back foot coming under. So again, all these little tips hopefully help. Like I'm always a big fan of, go and ghost it. Don't have a distraction of the ball. Go and take your time. Go and put with the ball ending up there. Great. So I'd put a ball down on the ground about there. So, you know, it's just under where that contact point is. I'm a big fan of putting a little bit of tape there where, where my front toe would be, somewhere around there. And just, just working on that, going in, going from the tee, working on that position, lunging to the tape, coming out, working on the way I exit, working on that little, um, what, what am I calling this? That little flick, that little, you know, kind of sending the racket away from, you know, my, my swing, you know, I can't quite think of the word right now, but you get what I'm saying. I'm throwing that racket it up, you know, and just ghosting that. Just, you know, I'm just going to run mine again a few times, just going boom, and then out. And then you go again, you go boom, and then out. You know, don't have the distraction of the ball. Yes, in time, put the ball in play in a solo, then with maybe a coach or drilling partners, that makes a big difference. But you know what? Get the muscle memory, all these little bits there. You can just see this here. I think that's quite interesting. Can't quite see it fully, but there's a slight C shape starting to develop there. You can just see how, how much I'm trying to coil and turn and get that C shape. There's a tiny one there, shallow one there, but yeah, I'd love to see my student be able to do that a little bit more. Okay, so have a little look out for the follow-up video of this because I think that'll be really useful for you to check out from the different angle because I'm going to be picking up some different nuances from exactly the same part of the chords, but filming it from that angle does help a lot. But as always, thank you very much for watching up until this point. Go and work on that squash game. Go and have a few of those little tips. And as always, grab that link in the, in the description. I want, to, I want to help you out with your swings. And please do keep showing the love for the channel. Share and subscribe and send it out to as many people as possible. Take care. I'll see you at the next one. Bye.